Hi there, I want to introduce this charger to those of you who haven't seen it before. This is um, a very good investment for anyone into RC or electronics. It is literally a one for all charger and this charger, um, as you can see here, it takes care of all these chemistries. So it does lithium polymer, life uh, PO4, um, lithium iron, nickel metahydride, nickel cadmium and lead batteries. It um, charges lead batteries up to 20 volts and as you can see it does up to 15 cells uh, for nickel so that means it does a nominal voltage of 18 volts. Um, it it is far more. It does far more than what I've just mentioned, which I'll I'll, I'll go through in a, in a, in a second. This is the IMAX B6 Mini um, from Sky RC. Make sure you get the original one. There are a lot of uh, uh, what do you call that compatible sort of ripoffs online that look almost identical. So just make sure the one that you get has the Sky RC logo on it. They cost a bit more than the generic IMAX B6. Um, and this is the mini one which costs even more than the standard IMAX B6. This one is a lot smaller than the original one and it discharges up to 2 amps. Whereas the larger IMAX B6 model only goes up to 1 amp. Okay, so this is what the unit looks like. Okay. So, this unit uh, has an uh, aluminium body. So, those are the balancing connectors. And those are female banana, uh, 4mm banana plugs uh, for the power output and also input obviously if you're discharging um, balancing sockets up to 5 cells as you can see there uh, what else this is a computerized um, charger um, there is a PC link um, which allows you to run the free charge master software on your PC and connect um, this charge up. I'm not sure if there's a Mac version for it. It also has a temperature sensor port which um, you can hook up an optional temperature probe accessory to to monitor your battery's temperature while they're being charged or discharged. Again make sure you've, you get the one with the um, hologram at the bottom so you know it's original. Okay, so as you can see, this new mini model is really small. I'm going to hook it up now. Uh, right, but before I do that, let's... I've actually taken out all the cables, I think. So, what it comes with, out of the box, is uh, this banana plugs here, which ends with a male T connector. So, you hook those up to the banana... Uh, female banana pots there. And then you hook this T connector up to uh, one of the other leads that comes with it. Uh, it comes with this one. So this is um, the black one is obviously Futaba. That one is XT60. So depending on what uh, connector your battery has, you, you choose the, uh, the lead that you need. This is probably the most uh, popular one for small model aircraft. This is JST, of course. Um, if you can't find one that suits you, you can use this. So hook that up to this and clip those on to your battery. So you can charge lead acid batteries like this. Okay, in terms of... oh. Before I, I proceed, just want to say that you can get, um, even if you, you can't find the connector for the battery that you're trying to charge, just go online and search for 
the connector that you need and get a JST to whatever connector you need uh, cable. So I got this one which is really cheap. This is male JST to 5 micro lossy connectors. I'm just using um, it to charge one battery at a time but since this one came with 5 so so be it. Um, okay so let's not waste too much time with that. In terms of power supply this thing needs you can see that it takes DC 11 volts to 18 volts so uh, obviously there's a boost and bug circuitry inside um, as you can imagine if it charges batteries up to 20 volts then it's going to boost the voltage up to 20 volts now how do you decide on the power source is the biggest question uh, that you have to consider when buying this what I've got here is a switching power supply that outputs 16 volts at 4 amps now that's pretty okay for what I need it to do but again if you're going to it, it depends on your application because if you've got really large um, battery packs that you want to charge up regularly then you have to get a much more powerful power supply otherwise this thing will drain too much current from your power supply and it's going to overheat the transformer and all that it also comes with um, a manual uh, I wouldn't count too much on, on this because it's not really written in very good English and stuff like that but it's good for reference uh, yeah it's good for Google's good quick reference uh, you can download the software online on their website for free it comes in a nice box like this okay so now I'm going to hook this up to this battery as an input and I'm going to set it up and resume recording this video okay so now I'm going to power up this charger with this 12 volt lead, a seal lead acid battery here and the reason I'm doing it is only because I haven't got an AC power outlet where I'm set at the moment uh, so this uh, was the cable that came with the charger and I'm just going to hook it up the battery there we go okay so I'm just gonna run through the the menu options because you've already seen what the charger comes with so here we go there are four buttons here obviously right everything's focused now so the first button says battery program so when you press that it takes you to the main menu which you can then scroll through using the decrease or increase buttons so that it goes backwards and goes forward so let's have a look at what is available so if you want to jump straight into charging or discharging all you've got to do is select your chemistry okay so let's just have a look at uh, lithium polymer because I, I'm sure the majority of people who buy this charger would be using it for lithium polymer uh, application right so it's to enter you press enter um, you then configure the parameters around your battery so to do that you press enter again and as you can see now that 2 amps um, bit is flashing uh, so you can charge up to um, you can charge your battery up to 6 amps uh, so set that to however many amps you want let's just say 1.5 amps the next thing to do would be to select the number of cells in your battery so obviously the, the voltage changes correspond with that so as you can see it can do up to 22.2 volts um, and once again that will require a very powerful uh, power supply uh, I, I imagine if you did that with this battery is going to drain uh, a lot of current from it um, so yep something to think about so most model aircraft 
um, would have either a three cell or two cell battery. So let's just say you've got three cell one. So you press enter. Now to start charging, um, whenever you want to start charging or discharging, what you've got to do is press enter and hold it. Uh, at the moment it says balance connect error because I haven't got a battery hooked up there. Um, but anyway, let's just go back to the main menu again. So let's say we've selected lithium polymer here. Let's go in again. Um, now you can use the increase and decrease button to select what you want to do with the battery. So here obviously we can do a balance charge or charge. Now this bit here is a bit misleading. I think if, um, there is an error on the firmware because it won't actually let you charge lithium cells without using the balancing ports anyway. So you, if you even if you do that, you've still got to connect the balancing um, connector. So I don't know why they've included that function. I, I think if you do a firmware update through USB, um, they may remove this function under LiPo. Uh, not sure. Okay. Then this fast charge, again, uh, refer to the menu to see how this works. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I think it just increases the amperage quicker than, than normal. Uh, storage, um, so that conditions your battery for long uh, life. Um, that's the discharge one. So if we go into discharge, as you can see, we can only discharge it up to uh, 2 amps. Mm, this thing will get really hot when, when you're running a discharge program because obviously it converts the energy to heat. Um, so once again, to start that, just press that and hold. And uh, it will start the discharge process. Okay, so what else has it got? It's got battery memory. So it's got 10 memory banks that you can configure. So why would you want to do that? Uh, so you don't have to uh, set the the current charge current and the voltage every time. Uh, wonder why it's so difficult to see now. Okay, let's look at uh, bank number five, with which I've saved. If we enter bank number five, so it tells you battery type lipo. I've set it to 3.7 volts, one cell. I've set it to 300 amps charging current because that's what I want for my battery. And that's the discharge current. So I've set, set all this and saved it to um, memory bank number five. So to recall that, all I, I, I have to do is press enter and hold it. And it recalls that setting. Let's see, there you go. Then now you can start charging LiPo uh, cells that. Um, okay, so that's memory. What else has it got? It's got uh, battery resistance meter, battery meter, which tells you the, the voltage of the whatever's connected the output. Uh, what else? Okay, let's go into system settings real quick. So this is where you set up all your safety parameters, like there you go, safety timer. Uh, safety timer means the whatever you're doing regardless of whether you're charging or discharging will cut off after that time is elapsed and that's just a safety feature to prevent uh, your batteries from exploding or catching fire if if the charger doesn't cut off and if if, it, um, if the battery is faulty and for some reason it never reaches the full fully charged uh, voltage um, you don't want to, to be supplying uh, current to it all all the while and um, you know you may end up catching fire or something um, what else capacity cut off so again that's just like the safety timer this one will cut off once it has supplied that not amount of uh, energy to the battery so the default value is 13 amp hour which is pretty sufficient for a lot of battery so I would suggest reducing that to something closer to the battery cell that you're charging um, and Fortunately, this doesn't get saved into the memory bank. Um, this is the system-wide setting, which I think is a bit silly because you could have a variety of batteries that you're trying to charge. Okay, so that's temperature cutoff. Again, for that, you need the temperature probe, temperature unit. Um, so rest time, do we really want to go into that? Okay, rest time, basically, uh, you use it for nickel metal hydride 
or nickel cadmium battery conditioning so you can set this charge up to charge and discharge and charge your your um, nickel cells over and over again to condition it and that's basically the delay between each cycle uh, so the way it detects when your nickel cells are full is uh, DVDT obviously so you got to set the well you can leave it in leave the peak value in uh, its default uh, mood just leave it in its default um, leave it in its default setting so I believe the default for nickel metal hydride is 5 millivolts and for nickel cadmium it's yeah I'm not sure but basically what that means is it, it, the charger will charge your battery and as, as the nickel cells um, get charged it, its voltage will increase and it will reach a point where the battery is fully charged then the voltage will decrease slightly um, and this charger will detect that voltage drop and if it falls by 5 millivolts or more then it determines that the battery is fully charged and cut, uh, cuts the charging off um, so that turns the sound on and off what else um, yeah that's all self-explanatory um, so that's your uh, low voltage cutoff um, it's probably useful if you are powering it from a battery like this because you don't want to deplete your power source um, cool uh, I guess that's that's about it if you have any questions please leave a comment below and I will try to answer it